finally we get to see the full power of the arcade come home. I am the Game Collector and this is Second Opinion Games and today I review every single light gun game for the original Xbox. Second Opinion Games Okay, so this is the original Xbox light gun. It must be the biggest freaking light gun ever made. It has pump action uh, for either a scope or to reload. It also has a scope sensitivity, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. A directional pad. It also offers force kickback, so you can actually feel every single shot. And rapid fire and auto reload. And even a spot for a memory card. It also features a barrel extension, which is totally worthless. A scope, which is even more worthless and a stock, which isn't meant for a normal person to use, but meant for a kid. So if you're a sixth grader, you could live out your sniping fantasies, whatever they may be. And that's rather unfortunate, but that is the Xbox light gun. Okay, bye. Now, Silent Scope Complete came out in 2004 by the publisher, Konami. Now, because of certain aspects of the light gun itself, I had to turn the brightness up a lot just to use it it didn't really show a very clear picture, so I had to use the controller for this gameplay capture. And it is a lot easier with the gamepad than the light gun itself, but if you happen to be using the light gun, well, that's where that dial comes in. If you have it turned all the way up, when you automatically scroll over a person, the scope will appear. And if you have it turned all the way down, then you have to manually activate the scope by pulling in the pump action. And that's the way I prefer to play the game. It does make every shot really tough, and you have to control your breathing and line up the shots as they come. Sniping every single person feels challenging and rewarding at the same time, but that time limit really ticks away fast. The first game is hard, and you have to really focus in on every single character, especially when you jump aboard a helicopter and have to shoot a moving target that is relatively quick. And because the bullets are really accurate to how bullet physics really are, you even have to lead the person even making shots harder and much more rewarding. The second game fully embraces the set pieces and still retains all of the challenge of the first game. Having shootouts on airplanes is just insane. And I like to think of myself as the dick sniper. That's right, I purposely aim for the dick of every single enemy I possibly can. You want to strike fear in the hearts of your enemies? Don't do headshot after headshot. No blow off their freaking cocks, because that sounds terrifying to me. A guy that purposely shoots every single enemy in the penis? Well, <laughs> that is pure horror. The third game in this series goes to a much faster paced route. Luckily, there's a slight lock-on feature, making every single shot just a lot easier. With a full-on arcade feel, all the terrific set pieces, and now you feel like the total badass, blowing everyone away. Now in all these games, they have ridiculous voice acting, which is one of my favorite parts about playing in the arcade. Just the over-the-top, way that the dialogue comes out is really hilarious. And this game got pretty much average scores across the board, and I personally think that it's certainly worth playing to this day. Bonus light. It's showtime. Now, let's play Metal Gear for real. House of the Dead 3 came out in 2002, and it was published by Sega, basically just to act as a big commercial for their upcoming blockbuster movie, House of the Dead. And it even shows a trailer for such right in the game, conveniently marketing to the House of the Dead superfans. Now, I really like the movie, but the game is even better. Just as cheesy as the movie, and just as cheesy as previous installments. The graphics this time around are arcade perfect and look 
beautiful. The shotgun that you get to use in the game is so overpowered. It means that you don't need any upgrades to your weapon at all throughout the game. Also, the branching paths are cut down to pretty much be non-existent. Now they're there, but you play through every level anyway, so they don't really matter. G's partner is lost in this facility, and he does what any good partner would do. He finds the guy's daughter and brings her along for this horrific ride through a zombie-infested playground. Now, this makes him the worst partner of all times, because honestly, I would do whatever it takes to save my kids and not want them putting themselves in danger to save me, ever. So G, you are a real piece of crap. But, you know, the girl in this game, it's her story and her emotional ride to prove herself that she is good enough to rescue her father and to follow in his footsteps. So it's really all about her and probably because she's kind of hot. So there's no innocent civilians to save throughout this game. Only G, who continuously finds himself just getting trapped by zombies. So you have to pick them off. If you do, you get an extra life. If you don't, there are no real consequences here. Just go back to shooting more zombies as G just gets up and is somewhat disappointed in you. If you happen to beat the game, you actually unlock House of the Dead too. Before you go into the game though, first you take an elevator back in time and make a few stops along the way to pick up different power-ups which you can then use in original mode in House of the Dead 2. Now the game has never looked this gorgeous before, even improving on the graphics from the Dreamcast version, making this pretty much the definitive way to play the game. Now it is a lot easier, even with a gun without auto reload and whatnot, because reloading is super simple, just pumping that action. You don't have to shoot off the screen at all, meaning you should just pull the trigger as fast as you can and reload every couple seconds, and you'll be blowing your way through this entire game in no time, which is a far superior game to actually House of the Dead 3. So the fact that you get both of these games on the same disc is amazing and should be in every light gun game collector's collection of all times because this is just perfect. And even though I believe that, it somehow gets an average review score of 72 on Metacritic. Now because of some awkward timing, two TVs were on their way out and new slim modern TVs were on their way in that are really not that compatible with light guns. So unfortunately, there's only one more light gun game for the original Xbox. So I'll let you watch some gameplay and give you just a little bit of time so you can think about what this masterpiece might be. Starsky and Hutch came out in 2003, made by Gotham Games. There's really not a lot to talk about this game. It's basically a driving game that has you tap the A button over and over and over, shooting power-ups and the car that you're trying to run down. And that's pretty much every single level. But to break up the monotony, they also have escort missions in here. And that's just even worse because this is one of the worst gameplay mechanics ever in any video game. And this is one of the highlights of it. I, I don't understand. It's just awful. Unless you turn on two player mode. Then one person drives while the other one shoots. You can pick up different power-ups like a speed boost or just more ratings, double points, or a more powerful gun. 
Now your gun this time around is far more powerful, doing tons of damage to the car and you don't have to keep on tapping that A button. No, this is definitely the preferred way to play. You just shred the cars and the enemies in this game, causing them to blow up and sometimes it looks like you're killing the people that you should be arresting. Now because this is a 70s TV show and it's very self aware, you have to do things for points like jump off ramps and other insane tasks and different highlighted options in the game causing set pieces to blow up and, and different things like that. Overall, the story is planned, but you're basically playing for the high action thrills, even though it's really kind of a boring game. Now playing on two player does make it far better, and I love the shooting in this game, but trying to find someone to play with you can definitely be a problem. Now Starsky and Hutch brings a Metacritic score of 58, but that's probably from anyone who's just played the single player. Actually having a friend beside you, as frustrating as it might be when they decide to drive into walls again and again, causing you to fail the missions, it actually brings it up to at least an average score. Now all three of these games can be considered gems in their own way, except for maybe Starsky and Hutch. That one just might not make the list. But if you have a light gun and you have an original Xbox and of course a tube TV to play with it, then all of them are completely worth having. And of course, that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. Nice shot by Hopefully you enjoyed this video, I had a great time making it, and I'm really starting to show some light gun game fatigue here, so I'm probably going to have to switch things up just a little bit. So please give me some more suggestions of different games that I can play, maybe even some hidden gems out there, and just more. I just want to play every stinking game that there possibly is, and I want to know what your favorite games are. So please. I'm a very lonely person. Leave me a message. I promise I read every single one of them, and I answer most. So until later, I will see you again, guys.